Good morning, book lovers of the internet. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So before I start by introducing today's video topic, pumpkins right over there because it's Halloween in two days and I wanted to decorate my bookshelves. So in today's video, I am going to be reviewing a book recommended by one of you people. I'm not quite sure who it was, so if you know, I mean if you're watching, let me know in the comment section down below. Um, today I am going to be reviewing The Necrophiliac by Gabrielle Withkop, and this one is translated, was translated from the French by Don Babst. Um, it has about 90 pages, and as you can see, my mum printed me this because I wanted to read it quickly, right? in time for Halloween. So I rated it 3 out of 5 stars, and the first thing I can say is that this one made me quite uneasy. I wasn't expecting to feel uh, that way, since I'm usually not surprised by anything I read or watch. But yeah, it was one hell of a freaky book, and I'm glad to say that I found nothing in it to be relatable. You might also be happy to hear that yeah, nothing in this book was relatable in my case. So, Lucien is the main character, and he is absolutely vile, and there's absolutely no way of justifying what he does, even though he tries to do so in the journals he writes for the people who might be reading his, um, his thoughts. I don't know why he would write this down to begin with, but he does have a good writing style, and I believe that it does... Um, come across better in French than it does in English. But anyway, um, I wouldn't have written such things down. Why would you want to remember this um, if you've experienced it? Isn't that enough? I mean, not sure if you're getting what I'm trying to say, but why do you need it written down? Of course, um, Lucien is a fictional character, I hope, and yeah, I mean, I'm glad to have familiarized myself with such an idea, so I feel as though the title sums it up pretty well, but there are some more things I'd like to add. So if you don't know, a necrophiliac is somebody who engages in sexual activities with the dead, and such people hardly view others as people. So yeah, I mean, even thinking about it can make you feel rather ill, but um, I feel as though the first thing Bro needs to do is to learn what boundaries are and allow for the dead to rest in peace. I mean, why not, you know? They're dead, give them a break. Secondly, this is rape, since it's not non-consensual, there isn't any consent being given, and it certainly doesn't matter or not whether a person is dead and hence can't feel anything. Um, it's repulsive is what it is, and... Thirdly, how does one become a necrophiliac? I mean, Lucien must have experienced some childhood trauma, which is probably best left unsaid, or perhaps he's just built differently. I feel as though I would have benefited more from reading about his childhood or what triggered him to do such vile things rather than to uh, read the vile things he actually engaged in. And yeah, it's one chapter after the next of him doing the same thing to different people from different um demographics so yeah i mean it's 90 pages but it's packed with a lot of rather traumatic scenes i would say so um i wonder whether or not if he lived nowadays he'd have settled for a sex bot instead of desecrated desecrating graves and their contents i wonder if that would have been enough for him um that is also something i'm rather curious about so if anybody watching is a necrophiliac, which I hope there aren't any necrophiliacs watching, because I heavily discriminate against those people. Um, let me know whether um, a robot would do the same thing for you as a dead person would. So, yeah, I mean, as you can see, I'm completely immersed in the story, by the way. I'm treating it as though it's real, as I'm pretty sure that there are some French people and some people from around the rest of the world who probably did engage in uh, these sorts of activities. So yeah, the fact that he doesn't care about gender or age when it comes to raping his dead victims, sounds like an oxymoron there, raping dead victims. Yeah, but it's absolutely vile, as I mentioned earlier, and his descriptions of such actions are even worse. Um, he goes to great lengths to describe how he feels and w 
what lengths he goes to to um, basically get a hold of the bodies and do what he has in mind to them. So, um, yeah, this was a completely new concept to me. Of course, I, I had heard of necrophilia before, and I've joked about it with friends. You know, I love dark humor a lot, but I'm glad to have read this one because I can now um, engage in dark humor in, an, in a more educated manner. And, yeah, I'm pretty sure that the jokes will be fantastic from now on. So I'm not sure, but if I had to guess, this weirdo would die of autoerotic asphyxiation. Unfortunately, these people never seem to suffer the consequences of their actions. And yeah, I mean, the ending is open-ended, which is ironic in a way, because even in death, um, this guy reanimates people. And in death, there is life in a way. And their lives are not yet over. So the fact that this was left open-ended meaning that we are meant to do with the ending um, what we want to basically uh, reflects heavily upon the the author, um, upon the main character himself. This is not a biography. I'm pretty sure Gabriel Whitcop um, didn't do any of these things and neither did the translator Don Baptist. I'm not trying to get anybody in trouble here. So yeah, him dying of autoerotic asphyxiation would have been the perfect conclusion. But um yeah, if there's one thing that I can definitely uh, recommend you keep in mind is that nowadays cremation is available. And even though I'm pretty sure that um, your grave getting desecrated after your death is statistically less likely to happen, um, I would still keep that in mind just in case because there are some creeps out there, some weirdos, some freaks, and... I wouldn't want to have anything to do with them, even after death. Um, yeah, this was a very, very morbid read, by the way. Um, I wasn't expecting it to be, uh, considering that it's only 90 pages long. But I'm glad to have read it just two days before Halloween, because it really got me into the, the spooky sort of spirit. And yeah, that's all I had to say about uh, The Necrophiliac by Gabrielle Whitcop, translated by... Don Bupst. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, check out the rest of my content because why not? It's absolutely fantastic, not to be missed. Definitely leave a like. I can't stress this enough. It really helps with the algorithm. And I'll see you in the next one, hopefully very, very soon. Bye, guys.